This is the second facet of reality from the book, 12 Facets of Reality, The Jain Path to Freedom by Gurdev Sri Shichibanu. And he gave me my name, my Jain name, Arihanta. So let's get on with it. There's 12 facets of reality that we're going through in this series. This is the second facet. I broke it down into half a dozen questions for you so we can um, track this whole conversation with you. Question one, what does it mean to have a weak mind or a deep mind? And this is about our protection in the world, in an unprotected world is the title of the second facet. When the mind becomes weak, and impressionable, the mind does not get thoughts and ideas that are of any depth. It doesn't have its own special way of thinking. And this is really important to the people at Enthinkment.com. And please visit the website and check out the videos. There's a weak mind that's very dangerous in the world. And you've probably seen it or you're experiencing it yourself. So the question here on number one, is this weak in the deep mind? What's the difference? So the soul is on its journey and we can meditate and do reflections to strengthen the mind. But if we're not meditating and we're not strengthening the mind, we're falling prey to just temporary impressions and we're focused just on being in the now or we're, we have some immediate concerns, etc. And in that temporary thinking that we're doing, we want to feel good, we want to get wealthy, we want pleasant relationships. But then this is a very shallow kind of thinking. And we want to have a deeper, what we call true storytelling, if you follow the book. And that's the one by uh, Jens Larson, Lena Brun, and myself on true storytelling. So we want to do long-term thinking. So we want to reflect on our life and the quest that we're on. And I think that's related as well to Enthinkment.com, to the Enthinkment Circle meets every Tuesday. Not just do this or that and enjoy it in the now. So now we have a second question. Well, the future, what is the future? And can we reflect and meditate on that future? Uh, this is what I call the anti-narrative process. If you want to learn about anti-narrative, go to anti-narrative.com and you'll find uh, 30, 40 articles listed there, bunch of charts and summaries, etc. So basically the whole process of the bet on the future I think is captured in uh, this first and second facet of reality. Remember the first facet was uh, the relationship of change to the changelessness. And now we have the second facet. The weak and the strong mind is just a part of it, but we, not, we need to know what's called the, and this is the third question, what are the two waves? Now, one is the wave of birth and the second is the wave of death. And these two waves are related. The coming of another wave itself indicates that it preserves a wave that has already emerged. And this is page 18, a quote. To merge and to emerge is this second facet of reality. And it's a deeper thinking. These two waves are connected deeply with one another, and that's what we're exploring here now. Uh, this is the deep truth of storytelling, the deep instinct of our existential experience, our living in the world. But if we're living in the world in a state of fear, it's a lot different than living in the world in a state of fearlessness. Now, why do people have fear? This is our next question. We are every day decaying. 
and everything around us is decaying and disappearing. Uh, my body's decaying. I got this nose thing that uh, went to the dermatologist and he took some uh, biopsies and he froze a bunch of things and uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm fearful about waiting out the 10 days to see if this requires a bigger operation, uh, malignant. So we're fearful always in the back of our mind because if we don't meditate and find a space where fear does not exist, then we're susceptible to that state of fearlessness. Now, we see that there's impermanence all around us and change, lots of change going on. But what is the changelessness? Go to the first tape I gave you. I'll get, put that link in the instructions, the directions, the descriptions. I'll put it in there. The second facet is to see the wave of emergence in the wave, right, of what's disappearing. So you have the emergence, the birthing, and you have the disappearing. So you have these two waves that are inter interplaying. And that's what I think is a real interesting part of this facet is the two waves theory. Um, I want to deepen my understanding and help you deepen your own understanding of the relation of these two waves, right? Uh, we're in this world that's changing and changelessness is also in that first facet. The second facet, though, is... Um, we're unprotected. We want to feel protected in a world of unprotection. Uh, all kinds of things happen to your body as you get older. You could have an accident at any day. Uh, people try to preserve what's there. I try to preserve um, the pond and the hackberry tree for so many years. You probably saw those tapes. If not, just do a search on them. Uh, subscribe and you'll find them. And I wanted to keep the pond. Uh, there was a lot of life, bird life, uh, frog life, uh, fairy shrimp. Uh, the pond supported the trees, the hackberry tree around the pond. And we love our, our preservations. So we want to preserve everything. We don't want it to change. Um, I've taken this uh, part of the tree from our yard, a branch that was dead and notice now it's alive it's got a deep red it was a desert willow um it's a screw on top i made and just beautiful textures it's so smooth and nice and i don't know maybe it's my way of it preserving that fallen dead branch there that branch was big around bigger around than my arm and i had to hone it down to the size uh, so I'm meditating and reflecting on the unprotectedness that tree faces. Uh, it won't be here forever. I won't be here forever. I'm in the flow. Things are always flowing. But I want to remove the temporary curtain. And I want to go deep in my reflection. I want to experience infinite bliss, infinite knowledge, and infinite vision of the future and this is to to live in a truly consciousness inwardly consciousness world and that's i think one of the main messages of this chapter by gurdev shri shichabanu the 12 facets of reality on the second facets uh you know, as I get older, I notice my body strength isn't what it was, especially coming out of stage four cancer, aggressive, and it gave me a few years to live. And I clasped clasp the little Buddha, and the little Buddha, if you saw that series, I decided to make cancer my friend, make the cells my friend, invite them to leave, and those that stayed, invite them to be well-behaved. Uh, so... When we feel no protection, how do we get help? Here's a good question. And there's four ways. 
We want to do Adi Hanta, that's my Jain name, for conquering our inner weaknesses, conquering our inner enemies, and realize we have no enemies, everyone is our friend. Uh, we own them all, Siddharna. We want to realize the perfect souls that achieve that pure, pure consciousness in, during their life. Sadhu. Uh, the energies that vibrate in the universe vibrate in us, and we vibrate in the that universe. There's the dharmas, right? The teaching of the enlightened ones tell us to have love, to have compassion, to have deep peace, and engage in ahimsa, the nonviolence. So those four are Hanta, Siddha, Sadhu, and the dharmas. Uh, those are really, really fundamental to uh, Jain, the walk of Jainism. Um, so I'm surviving my stage four cancer, yay, and now I'm turning a new path. What's going to be the new path? Now that I'm feeling well, not fearful, I'm feeling, oh, I live in an unprotected world, but... Um, I can engage in deep truth of inner reflections. That's what I want to do. I can get in touch with that flowing energy, sarana, that wellspring that's never exhausted you know, our inner being, um, our inner divine, as uh, Gurdiv calls it, and I call it that way too. I can ask this question, why are you afraid? Why am I afraid? I get afraid when I'm not connected to my inner world and I make the outer world something I'm trying to hang on to. So to get out of this feeling of unprotectedness, to become consciousness of the temporary curtain where we engage just in the temporary now and worry about wealth and happiness and things of that sort without understanding the internal flow that we're in, I wanted to leave you with um, Gurudev on page 25 has uh, some amazing statements and I'll read them to you in the English form first and then I will wade my through, wade my through, way through pronouncing the, uh, the way in which the Sanskrit words, because those words have power in the Sanskrit. I'm not sure they have power in the English, but we'll try it out. It starts this way. These are the four blessings. Conquerors of inner weaknesses are blessings. Perfect souls are blessings. Saints are blessing. The teaching which has come from the omniscient ones is blessing. The next stanza. These four are supreme, unsuppressed. Arihanta, are supreme. Siddhana are supreme. The saints are supreme. The teaching which has come from the omniscient ones is supreme. The final stanza. These are the four protections. I go to the protection of Arihanta. I go to the protection of Siddhana. I go to the protection of Sadhu. I merge with the pure teachings, nonviolence, peace, love and compassion. When your small self merges with these four protections, the higher self, your reality emerges and you are in touch with the higher self is the message here. Now I will apologize for my mispronunciations, but I practice Kante Malanganam, Ayanta Malanganam, Siddha Malanganam, Sahu Malanganam, Kavi Patan Dhamman Malanganam. Second stanza. Gautare Langtama, Ayanta Langtama, Siddhana Langtama, Siddhu Langtama, Kavi Patan Dhinamana Langtama. Last stanza. Gautare Sahana Pavasanam, Patana Arianta Savana Panasanam, Siddha Savana Panasanam, 
Sidana Shavam Padasanam Givelai Bananam Dananam Shanam Padasanam When the small self merges with the four protections, the higher self, your reality emerges. And this is the what this meditation on the second facet of reality is all re all about becoming aware of your unprotectedness, but then deep reflection meditation to become aware of your pure stream of life. You're merging with that consciousness. Let you experience the eternity of life, the eternal flow. That wave means another wave has subsided and you're merging with yet another wave. So jump from one wave to the other and join us for the sessions on the 12 facets of reality. This is Dr. David Boji, emeritus professor and now uh, honorary visiting professor at Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee. All the best.